Hey guys, so today we're going to be doing another distribution review. This is probably the first proper distribution review from my new laptop, so I apologise if we have any new issues that arise as a result of the new recording setup. Also, uh, just before I begin, I was the latest guest on Destination Linux podcast, so uh, if you guys want to check that out, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. I had a great time with those guys, it's definitely worth checking out, and it is pretty much two hours of podcast, so uh, hopefully that'll go some way to making up for the lack of content on this channel as of late. Anyway, hopefully we shall rectify that, and... We shall rectify that with this video. So, Peppermint OS, the latest version to come out was only a couple of days ago, Peppermint OS 8. So I've been trying uh, it out uh, and uh, been having quite a, quite a good time. It's quite an interesting distribution. There's quite a lot to it. Um, so I will cover as much as I can, but I'm probably only realistically going to be able to scratch the surface here. Now, it is based on Lubuntu, but it uses a rather interesting desktop environment. Um, this sort of on the surface looks a little bit like uh, XFCE. It has the uh, whisker menu here. The whisker menu, of course, uh, is my favorite of all of the panel menus. You can just uh, line up your favorites. You can have recently used um, applications. It sort of has the benefits of both a menu because it's big enough and it can sort of, uh, you know, show enough, uh, show enough options, uh, but also has the benefits of the panel where you've got a few extra bells and whistles like uh, recently used or, or favorited icons as well. So to me, it's a it's a um, a panel menu that has uh, everything you need but nothing more. Um, and actually, usually when I set it up on my daily driver, when I do have the XFCE and the Whisker panel, I actually have it to open directly to recently used uh, because um, that's where well, you know, that's where my most commonly used items tend to be. Uh, most people really, I would say, only use maybe about half a dozen or so. Um, applications maybe some of your more power users might get up into like 20 25 ter territory but um but yeah really for the vast majority of time um you use it in front of a computer could probably um you know you'd probably be using one of of uh, of your most recently used applications it comes with chromium as the default browser uh not the usual choice but um it's a good browser so i can't fault them on that one so when I say this is a bit of an odd desktop environment, what I mean is the file manager that comes with it uh, isn't the XFCE one, which is Thunar, uh, but this is Nemo, which is the one that comes with Mate. In fact, I think in the Softpedia article that, um, that announced this release, they did actually um, say that this desktop environment was based on Mate, and I assume that that was, the mis that was a mistake made on the fact that it comes with the Nemo um, file manager but it just seems to be uh, like a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different uh, desktop environments um, I think the window manager is also the one from XFCE but I'm not 100% certain there anyway so um, but yeah it's it's it certainly seems to be a distribution that, that borrows a lot from a lot of other distributions in fact in one uh, example here we've got the update application and I think we can uh, uh, just open it up here nope. uh, this is the mint update manager. This is the same one that comes from Mint and was developed by the Mint team. And it was, uh, yeah, ported across to their, um, the Peppermint repositories, I believe. So um, that's pretty cool. I've, I've actually quite liked the Ubuntu, um, not the Ubuntu, the, the Linux Mint um, updater. I thought that was uh, pretty good. Although I will say before those of you ask, uh, the oh, I don't think I can actually demonstrate. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, it, I, uh, it sets to update everything uh, off the bat. So it doesn't make that um, a distinction that Linux Mint, I think, makes where they refuse to do, or not necessarily refuse to do kernel updates, but there is an option not to do kernel updates for the sake of stability. So, yeah, uh, what else is there to show? The Peppermint settings panel. So it doesn't have either, it doesn't have an XFCE settings panel or a Mate settings panel. This is, uh, from what I can tell, a one developed specifically for Peppermint. Um, you've got the Peppermint Control Center here, which gives you a lot of a lot of customization in terms of the overall desktop. It gives you desktop features here. Um, you know, this level of customization is probably derived from XFCE. Um, yeah, I mean, you can sort of, you can sort of, the settings somewhat look a little bit familiar. Um, 
I changed the fonts and I made the fonts a little bit smaller when the, the default out, out of the box um, font. I, in many distributions have the font at size, I think it's 11, and I always switch it down to 10 because to me 11 just seems a little bit too big to fit within all the uh, the UI stuff. Um, it comes, interestingly enough, it comes with Dropbox and a Google Drive um, uh, applications installed, which is quite interesting. I'll get to that in a, in a moment. But it gives you a lot of uh, control panel options here and even also of course gives you the additional drivers so if you've got like a NVIDIA card or what have you then um, then you can uh, you can install that there can I just pop that down okay. alright well I'll let you get down while you're still searching for stuff uh, Bluetooth adapter, Samba shares so there's a lot of stuff I don't really know what Firefox theme lock is um, but yeah and you can there's update manager settings and all that kind of stuff as well so yeah, that's a pretty good settings panel for what it is. Um, what uh, I forget what. Um, oh, so it comes with the peppermint terminal, which is a specifically designed terminal. Uh, again, that com that came with a semi-transparent background on the um, on the terminal, and I really do not like that. Okay, anyway, uh, because it just it sort of messes with the stuff behind it in terms of the visuals. So there's this thing called ICE in peppermint, which is basically uh, make your own electron apps but not using Electron. So what you do is you open up this, you can open up this ICE application, you can then make a menu entry, which basically turns a website, so it could be like um, uh, Slack or Discord or something like Twitter or TweetDeck as well. And if you wanted that as an application, if you wanted that website as an application, then you would just put the web address there, you'd put the name of it there, you'd set up the icons and it will put a little menu entry uh, that would then basically turn a website into a on the hoof electron app, which can be pretty good. Um, it does often tend to bring with it uh, a little bit of a memory. Uh, it, it, it does tend to use uh, a little bit more memory. Now, this Google Drive application here does use um, a fair bit of memory. However, I don't know how much of that is attributed to Google Drive itself and how much of it is attributed to the fact that it... The, the, the Google's websites use a lot of memory, <laughs> which is a big problem there. Maybe I would imagine it's it's some of both. But the Google Drive application that they give you is um, like an example of an ICE application. So there is, I, I, be, I believe there's drag and drop support for stuff like Google Drive and Dropbox when, it, when it's done through the web browser. Um, but it isn't a native client. It really is... Um, uh, a, a web browser without decoration. However, in a lot of cases, you can still do the same thing with things like Google Drive. You can still drag and drop and and almost treat it as a um, as a as a directory folder, um, but not quite. Uh, and I think Google wants to push towards that. Uh, I, I my my guess, you know, my my feeling, my gut feeling about Google Drive not coming to Linux is because Google want to like eventually move towards an all cloud experience which um, Google Drive would not be part of. Like you would uh, access Google Drive directly through the web interface rather than through the, the client. And the client is just the thing they're using to sort of bridge the uh, bridge the gap. And it's the, it's the mechanism they're using to get all your files up onto their cloud. So um, is there much else to say? Um, Qt applications look quite good. Um, there's VLC down there. What did I install? I installed something, didn't I? It was, was it the KeyPass manager or something? Oh, no, um, uh, Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, simple Screen Recorder is also, I believe, a QT application. That looks fine out of the box. Um, it's nice and snappy. Very nice and snappy. Uh, I've had no uh, issues running it at all. Uh, there are a fair number of these cloud apps. So this is definitely a distribution aimed at being a cloudy operating system, which is... Um, Probably not the best way of explaining it. It comes with this online photo editor as well. Uh, Pixlr editor, which is quite an interesting one. I like their pencil effect. I'm just going to show off their pencil effect. Right, so if I were to draw... I could try and draw a... Well, that is not a very good... Um, it's supposed to kind of be a person. Oops, I need to... I'm drawing this on tracker pad on a laptop, so bear with me. It's going to be horrendous. But look at that pencil effect. That's quite an interesting pencil effect. Um, I don't know if you guys know what it's called or anything like that. Um, and then can I can I do an arm? 
I can, but I don't know what he's... Yeah. And then maybe another arm out front as if he's walking. Oh, there you go. That's like, that's a potato man or something of some variety. Uh, um, but yeah, I quite like that pencil effect. It actually looks kind of like, I mean, it's clearly a terrible drawing, but it's just something I did on a track about in 30 seconds. But I quite like that pencil effect. Um, and that is um, Pixlr Editor. So I wouldn't be surprised. I think you can probably find that online. So it's distro agnostic. In fact, um, you know, all of these cloud stuff is technically distro agnostic. And I always wonder whether or not eventually there will be like a peppermint style distro or a chromixium style distro, a cloud based distro that will just wrap that all together. But I um, uh, personally, my heart is with local applications, I guess, and, uh, and local client stuff. It's snappier. It's um, you're not reliant on the internet and all that kind of stuff. So it comes with transmission bit torrent client. Uh, it comes with simple scans, simple, simple scans all you need. Uh, it doesn't come with LibreOffice or anything like that. Um, it comes with Google, you know, a, a cloud calendar. I, you know, I mean, I don't use that many Google services, but I, I can't deny that things like Gmail and the, the Google Calendar are great. Like they're great. You are, you know, like from from a user, um, they're very easy and full, full featured and all that kind of stuff. Um, side note, one of the reasons I don't actually like using Google services is because they have a habit of taking really good pieces of, um, you know, really good services and pieces of software and just getting rid of them. Just, just you know, oh, not enough people use this. We'll get rid of it overnight or without warning. And, and things like Google Reader, you know, users only add like a couple of months to um, to jump ship on that one. And, and Google, have, they, you know, they, they cut as many services as they bring in, which is always the, uh, you know, it always gives me a feeling of trepidation. So anyway... Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, software manager. Uh, software manager. And I think it uses the Mint Software Center as well, uh, which does, well, it doesn't take as long to load up as it used to. It used to take quite a while to load up. Uh, nowadays, it seems uh, significantly more responsive. Anyway, you saw how long it took to load up. Uh, I've always liked the Mint Software Manager. It's simple. It only gives you what you need. It's very sort of, you know, utilitarian, I guess is the word, very pragmatic, practical. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I keep going to the internet for the things. But um, And then, uh, yeah, it gives you a list of the packages you can get. It's not the most user-friendly because, as you can see, it refers to a lot of the packages uh, by their package name rather than like a more, more um, user-friendly application name I, most people can navigate that it's certainly never been a problem with me even when i started using linux i mean my first major linux distribution was F fedora core six or seven i think uh and my and, and and then i moved on to the ubuntu's and linux mint and all that lot and they they did the same thing and it never once threw me for a loop sometimes like you have to think about whether or not you want to install transmission gtk versus transmission and all that kind of stuff and that can probably throw a lot of new users out um immediately um I also like the reviews. I like the star reviews, and I like uh, that there are text reviews um, that you can get beneath it. Uh, judging from all of this, it looks like they use the same reviews from Linux Mint as well. It seems like there's like a central review source. Could be wrong, but I kind of get I, the, the numbers, you know, like the scores and the review numbers and all that kind of stuff. They look the same as Linux Mint. Um, so I think there might there might be like that common ancestry there. Okay, so I think that's really about everything I kind of wanted to cover. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Uh, the text editor is that Pluma? Uh, oh no, it can't. Xed, Xed, yeah. Um, that is it. Uses some of the X apps that uh, Linux Mint have. Oops, I there. Yeah, still getting used to the uh, the tracker pad there. Um, What's the cal yeah the calculator app? Does it give us the X calculator app? Um, Martig, okay, right, wow, okay, okay. This is eclectic. So we've got the Ubuntu Mate calculator, the Mint text editor, its own terminal, the Mint update manager, uh, the Mint software. This is a you know th this is this is ta this is borrowed a lot from a lot of different sources. I kind of like that. Um, but I suppose the the operative question here, and uh, bear in mind that Peppermint OS has been a pretty popular Linux distribution now. If I go to DistroWatch, maybe the front page. Uh, DistroWatch, never to be taken too seriously in terms of their distro rankings. It's usually community enthusiasm that this best measures, not general usage or usage numbers. Um, 
but the but peppermint is not too far down there is it? it's 27 so it's just a step below tails and a step above mx linux and a step above android x86 so it's in the um you know it's, it's in the this is a distribution that people use category um but the operative question i want to ask is does this really offer that much that something like linux mint doesn't already it uses many of the same uh software components uh, this is obviously significantly more lightweight, but then again, Linux Mint do an XFCE edition, which is pretty good. So um, it does have ICE, but then again, uh, an easy way to to make a an Electron application is to install the Electron package, the actual Electron package, and then just you know do an Alt F2 like I'm going to do here now, and then just type Electron, oops, and then just type in the um, the website that you want to make into an Electron app. I don't think I actually got. Electron installed here now, so I can't actually do it to demonstrate. But then you do Electron, then you type in, I think you have to type in the HTTPS as well. Um, and then it gives you the, um, and then type in the URL, and then it gives you, you, you know, it loads up Electron with that website inside. So it, it, that can be done on, on a lot of other distributions as well without too much more difficulty. Not many people know that because, well, to be honest, it ain't that useful. And sometimes it's better just to open up another window in the browser. It doesn't, you know, it uses fewer system resources because it's all part of the same program, whereas with Electron apps, you you have a separate process each, but not like an entire browser, not just a separate process, but an entire browser for for each application. Um, and with ICE as well, like it 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 does. Um, I haven't had a look at it in in you know in terms of in thoroughly in terms of how it uses resources and so forth, but it certainly. Um, like it's you know certainly like uh, developed local client based sort of applications are definitely uh, better in terms of. Um, of uh, of performance there anyway. So it does seem that ICE and Electron sort of do overlap in a lot of ways there. ICE is, of course, more user-friendly and allows you to put it in, into the menu. But um, but yeah, and a lot of these applications, like it doesn't come with a... Um, it doesn't come with an Office suite because it's, you know, so you do need to be on the cloud or just install LibreOffice. Like, it's hardly uh, hardly great shakes. Uh, one of the interesting things... Oh, one of the things I do like about it as well, one of the things I did forget to mention, which I do like to bring up, there are plenty of theme options here. It's mostly... They look vaguely like New Mix or a variant of New Mix. Um, there's also Greybird. Uh, Greybird. So uh, so that, look, that can look pretty good. I forget which one now. It's just New Mix, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, there are a few good um, themes that come out of the box. Uh... Before I go, I will say that the size of this distribution was 1.2 gigabytes, which is probably on the larger end these days. Maybe not... Mm, I probably could think. I think uh, there are probably a few distributions now that ship at that. Um, but that is a little... I, I feel that that is quite a large file size, considering that... Um, that the, you don't get that much with it beyond... Um, other distributions. There don't seem to be too many more applications here that are installed. There's a few more. I had to install Simple Screen Recorder. comes with GEVC View. But considering it didn't come with LibreOffice or GIMP or anything like that, um, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, it does seem to be a little bit on the large side, but they have included more desktop backgrounds. Uh, actually, desktop backgrounds is another thing I could show you. Uh, and themes, and apparently they're quite big. So uh, that could have some kind of uh, meaning. Uh, some of these desktop backgrounds, this probably has the nicest collection of desktop backgrounds I have seen on a distribution for a while. These are very, these are kind of like stylized and um, I would put it wallpapers there. Yeah, and they look beautiful. Uh, so I quite like that. I, like, I always like it when a distribution just includes a nice set of... Uh, of wallpapers there it's just a bit of a bonus so i can't think of anything else i want to say about this distribution but all in all it's really quite good like if i had it as a daily driver i'd be using it happily uh but it also does borrow a lot from linux mint so are you better off with linux mint i you know i i can't say like a lot of it is what i can do with linux mint i can do with peppermint and what i can do with peppermint i can do with with linux mint and that the same goes for ubuntu as well um out of the box, it is easy to set up and use, and it does come with a lot of things that I personally install as well. So that I think they've clocked on, uh, you know, they've they've got a 
they've got a decent software selection i think when although limited you know they've got a vlc i like the choice of things like the text editor and uh, it comes with synaptic package manager as well so things like that i i quite appreciate um so i wouldn't necessarily say it's like the mo like an, a, a super newbie friendly distribution although i'm sure newbies would be comfortable enough to jump in and go with it if they're if they're sort of not particular you know if they're if they're needs are particularly um you know the um, um sort of regular and, and you know if there's if there are not any unusual requirements required butchered that sentence but there you go uh but yeah if you're just a regular computer user you'll find everything you need here so um and then some and i like that they've done something interesting with ice um it's probably not something that i would be like super into using but a distribution that tries these kind of things is always uh, something that I felt is is a good thing about sort of the Linux ecosystem of distributions. That there's always that incentive and, and enthusiasm to to try new stuff. So, yeah, that's about it for me today. I think uh, give Peppermint 18 a try if you are so inclined. It works pretty well in the virtual machine. I spun it up there as well. Um, yeah, I, I like it, but it's uh, but but it does seem to overlap on a lot of other distributions that I also quite like. So I don't I don't really know where that puts me there. This is why I don't give scores on distributions because it's like it is really good, but it also but so you know like that doesn't that that in and of itself is uh is is quite limited information. So. That's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Destination Linux podcast, of course, link in the description below. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.